identify the structures A to C. This is uh, a coronal section of the side of the head, as you can see here on the inset. Here's the cranial cavity, and this is just below the cranial cavity in this region. And so this is the region of the temporomandibular joint. A is part of the temporal bone. This is the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. And C is the head of the mandible. Here's the head and here's the neck of the mandible. Together, they form the condyle of the mandible. So here's the head, and this is the temporomandibular joint, and you can see here the intraarticular disc within the joint, which divides the joint into two compartments, superior and inferior compartments. Which nerve supplies motor fibers to the muscle that produces this facial expression of Adele? The muscle is the orbicularis oris muscle. It is located in the lip and surrounds the mouth in concentric fibers. When it contracts, it puckers the mouth and is used in kissing. Which nerve is sensory to her upper lip? The sensory innervation of the upper lip is provided by the infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve arises at the infraorbital foramen and divides into branches and it supplies the upper lip. The upper lip is the area of supply of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. This is the area of supply of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. And the infraorbital nerve is one of the three cutaneous branches of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. The other one is the zygomatico-facial and the other one is the zygomatico-temporal. The lower lip including the area over the mandible, is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. And here it is the mental branch that arises from the mental foramen. The mental nerve is a branch of the inferior alveolar nerve, a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The other cutaneous branches of the mandibular division are the auriculotemporal and the long buccal nerve that supplies the skin of the cheek. So you can see here that the upper lip is the area of cutaneous innervation of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve, so as the lower eyelid, while the lower lip is the area that is supplied by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The upper eyelid is supplied by the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. Which gland is related to bone at A? which muscle is attached at B. This is a view of the inside of the mandible, and you can see here that this is the mylohyoid line, and above the mylohyoid line, we are in the mouth cavity, and below that, below mylohyoid line, is the neck or the submental region. So the gland that is located in the floor of the mouth, above mylohyoid, is the sublingual gland, and there's a fossa here, which is called the sublingual fossa. The fossa, which is below the mylohyoid line, is produced by another gland, another salivary gland, which is the submandibular gland, and the fossa is the submandibular fossa. Which muscle is attached here? This is part of the coronoid process of the mandible, and the muscle that is attached here to the coronoid process is the temporalis muscle. What is the type of joint in A? These are cervical vertebrae, lateral view, and the joint here is a secondary cartilaginous joint that is located between the bodies of vertebrae. There is an intervertebral disc in this space. Which spinal nerve passes through B? This is an intervertebral foramen. You can see here the other intervertebral foramina. This one is very clear, the intervertebral foramen, and the intervertebral foramina transmit the spinal nerves in the cervical region, there are seven cervical vertebrae. So this is the atlas, axis number two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is the seventh cervical vertebra, the vertebra prominence, and the cervical nerves, there are cervical, eight cervical spinal nerves. So C1 passes above atlas, C2 above the axis, C3 above the third cervical vertebra, and above C7, between C6 and C7, it is the seventh cervical nerve, but between 
C7 and T1 at this foramen, it is C8, the eighth cervical nerve. From this point downwards, spinal nerves will leave intervertebral foramina below the vertebrae corresponding in number. So below T1 vertebra is T1 spinal nerve. But here between C7 and T1 vertebra, it is C8 spinal nerve. Identify the nerve A, name one muscle supplied by it. To be oriented here, this is the anterior direction. Here's the superior direction. Here's the auricle, that's the neck. And this is the angle of the mandible where you can see masseter muscle, facial artery here. This is the submandibular salivary gland. And here's the common carotid artery bifurcating into external and internal carotid arteries. And you can see here, this is a very characteristic view of the nerve that makes a loop crossing the external carotid artery and its lingual branch. This is the hypoglossal nerve. That is the 12th cranial nerve. It supplies motor innervation to all muscles of the tongue, excluding palatoglossus, which is considered as the muscle of a palate and supplied by the vagus nerve. The other muscles that are supplied by the hypoglossal nerve include genioglossus, hyoglossus, styloglossus, and all the intrinsic muscles of the tongue. Bezel B is the internal carotid artery, and this artery has no branches in the neck. It passes through the carotid canal and gives branches inside the cranial cavity. So it supplies the ophthalmic artery, for example, and then divides into two terminal branches, the anterior and middle cerebral artery that supply the brain. And it is one of the two main sources of blood supply of the brain together with the vertebral artery. Identify the canal A, which nerve passes through it. Canal A is located in the maxillary bone. This is the maxillary bone. We are looking at the maxillary bone from the medial side. You can see the large maxillary hiatus, which leads into the maxillary sinus. This is the frontal process of the maxilla, and this is the palatine process of the maxilla. And here is the alveolar process that carries the maxillary teeth. So the canal here is the incisive canal passing from the nose to the heart palate. The nerve that passes through it is located on the nasal septum. It is the nasopalatine nerve. It's a branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion and the pterygopalatine fossa. It gains access to the nose through the sphenopalatine foramen, passes along the nasal septum, supplies the nasal septum, and as its name indicates, nasopalatine, it leaves the nose to go into the palate and it supplies the heart palate together with the greater palatine nerve that reaches the palate through the greater palatine foramen. In fact, this canal, the incisive canal, also transmits an artery, but the artery is the continuation of the greater palatine artery, and the artery ascends through the incisive canal to reach the nose and supply the anterior part of the nasal septum, where it participates in the formation of the highly vascularized area, which is on the nasal septum, on the anterior part of the nasal septum called Little's area or Kesselbach area. So the incisive canal transmits the nasopalatine nerve and the greater palatine artery. Identify the nerve A, name two cranial nerves that contribute to its fibers. This is a dissection of the infratemporal fossa, the ramus of the mandible, has been removed so as part of the body of the mandible and we can see the infratemporal fossa and also the cranial cavity here. In the infratemporal fossa, the nerve is the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve and its branches like the buccal nerve, lingual, inferior alveolar and this nerve that goes backwards to the auricle and to the temple is the auriculotemporal nerve. This nerve carries sensory fibers that are distributed to the skin of the temple and the auricle 
and also to the temporomandibular joint. And these fibers, they originate in the trigeminal ganglion, the sensory neurons that are present in the trigeminal ganglion. So the trigeminal nerve is the first nerve that contributes to the fibers of the auriculotemporal nerve. At this location here in the infratemporal fossa and medial to the mandibular nerve, there is a small, tiny ganglion called the otic ganglion. This is a parasympathetic ganglion. It receives preganglionic fibers from the lesser petrosal nerve, and the cells of the ganglion, the postganglionic cells and postganglionic fibers, will accompany the auriculotemporal nerve to be distributed to the parotid gland as the nerve passes through the gland. These fibers are secretomotor for the parotid gland. The origin of these fibers is the otic ganglion, and the preganglionic fibers, they, as I said, arrived from the lesser petrosal nerve. The lesser petrosal nerve is derived from the tympanic plexus in the middle ear and this plexus is derived from the glossopharyngeal nerve so this is the second cranial nerve that contributes to these fibers identify the foramina a b and c this is a view of the heart palate showing in the midline the incisive canal and posteriorly the other two foramina here is B is the greater palatine foramen, and C are a group of foramina, small foramina, called lesser palatine foramina. These foramina, whether the greater or the lesser palatine foramina, they transmit nerves and vessels that carry their names. They originate in the pterygopalatine fossa because they communicate between the pterygopalatine fossa and the mouth. So they are originate from the pterygopalatine ganglion and the maxillary artery. The incisive canal transmits the nasopalatine nerve from the pterygopalatine ganglion and the continuation of the greater palatine artery, which ascends up into the nose. Identify the structures A to F. This is an axial CT of the head. It is located at a level below the skull. Here's the anterior aspect. Here's the posterior aspect laterally. You can see the auricle E, and you can see the level of the section here. It's located at the level of the atlas vertebra. This is the atlas, anterior arch and posterior arch. The anterior arch articulating with the odontoid process or the dense of the axis, F, at the median atlanto-occipital joint. Laterally is the foramen transversarium, and posteriorly, this is the posterior arch and posterior tubercle of the atlas. And this is the anterior view. Anteriorly here, this is a space which is located in the maxilla, and this is the maxillary air sinus. The space, maxillary air sinus, is located on the lateral side of the nose. So in the midline is the nose, and in the middle of the nose is the nasal septum B. Behind the maxilla, you can see the medial and lateral pterygoid plates. So G is the lateral pterygoid plate and A is the ramus of the mandible. So this is the ramus, again, lateral pterygoid plate. This region is the infratemporal fossa. H is the space that is located behind the nose, and definitely we are below the cranial cavity here. So behind the nose, below the cranial cavity, the space is the pharynx. To be specific, it is the nasopharynx. Name two muscles attached to G. G is the lateral pterygoid plate and it is sandwiched between the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. Where do the markers H and I lie? As I said, I is the maxillary sinus and H is the nasopharynx.